In 2019, Apple tried to have a stronger presence among the streaming services such as Hulu, Netflix and HBO. But the company we're talking about here is Apple and they want to make an entrance with an original series since all the other platforms also created their own distinct TV shows. And now it was Apple's time to shine. And this show must have been so distinct and ambitious that it may get Apple the necessary foothold in the streaming competition. Well, at least that was the idea. Well, welcome to VA's edition of Mistakes Were Made. John here, and just before we start, if you want to see more videos like this, make sure to hit that like button, subscribe, turn on the notifications, all the cities, and let's get back to it. Apple as a giant that it is wouldn't accept an OK show. They wanted their own Game of Thrones, their own House of Cards without the spicy. And boy, they were not scared to spend a little money. So they end up with a small budget of $150 million a season and cast the Jennifer Aniston and Reese Witherspoon as their lead. All the gals we know and love. Lads and gents, and I present you The Morning Show. Oops, my bad. Wrong clip. And I present you The Morning Show. That the person that is telling them the truth about the world is an honest person. The Morning Show features Jennifer Aniston and Stu Carell as Alex Levy and Mitch Kessler, two longtime anchors of a highly popular morning news program called The Morning Show, with an excellent viewer ratings. After doing the show together for many years, Mitch gets fired due to a sexual misconduct scandal in post Me Too era. Fuck you! Fuck you! you know? Alex was personally having problems with the network prior to this to keep her hosting position on the show. Okay, my on air partner, my TV husband, is a sexual predator now? And now she has to deal with the backlash from the scandal and the network in order to stay in the show that she worked so hard and made it popular all those years. Mitch, outcasted from the public after the scandal, planning a way to somewhat clear his name, tries to reach out to his former co-host Alex. Meanwhile, a local news reporter Bradley Jackson, played by Witherspoon, has a public freakout when her cameraman knocked over by a protester on a coal mine protest, which goes viral on the social media. And that's all they fucking care about! And there's a human cost! And it's exhausting! I'm in Booker of the show Hannah, on a search for a strong woman's story, decides to book Bradley for an interview on the show. Alex passive-aggressively interviews Bradley in the morning show with a bias that Bradley had a freakout just to be famous, but Bradley's sincerity is approved and well received by the audience. And this gets the attention of the chaos steering network executive Corey Allison. And there goes our main plot. There are some minor twists, but uh, we'll get back to that later. August of 2017. Apple had the executive decision of getting into the streaming game, starting with the outputting Netflix out of a TV drama. A TV drama that will herald Jennifer Aniston's return to the television. A huge PR move for both Aniston and the Apple TV. Being the company known for its strict annual deadlines for their products, Apple wanted the show to be ready as soon as possible. Morning Show's concept loosely based or was loosely based on a non-fiction by Brian Stelter called The Top of the Morning. Stelter's Top of the Morning and the original idea of the show revolved around the feud between the Morning Show hosts that Stelter oversaw while he was working as a reporter. Producers of The Morning Show only had the first script from the writer and the first time showrunner Jay Carson. The pressure from the Apple side was real. Producers and the writers were in a panic of not being able to end up with a properly written show. During this time, hashtag MeToo movement was on the news. And one story in particular got the attention of the writers. NBC's Today host was also a part of sexual misconduct allegations. It was clear to the writers of the show that it had to contain Me Too element in it to stay relevant. Aniston and Witherspoon were not happy with the current state of the show. According to the THR sources, quote unquote, the script wasn't up to their standards. Be that as it may, but if you didn't like the material, why partake in it? Rather than trying to adapt the material to your likings, one might ask. Anyway. Changes in the pilot were not enough, so they started looking for a more experienced showrunner and a writer who could write a woman's experience, finally deciding on Bates Motel showrunner Carrie Aaron. Which I can totally understand, a female perspective can bring a whole new sense and characteristic to the show, but the stars and the Apple executives was forcing this mutation is the problem here. If the idea and creative will came directly from the creator and the plot was built around the themes like Me Too, Sexual Misconduct, etc., it will feel less retrofitted from the viewer's side. With these changes, the show was back to the drawing board, and the star involvement continued. With Aniston and Witherspoon demanded the original showrunner Carson's credit by credit, well, credit by credit, that's funny, will be removed and troubles continued. 
While Aniston and Witherspoon were too busy bringing their ideas to the show, Apple's strict deadlines weighed heavily on the new showrunner Carrie Aaron. In an interview, Aaron expressed, I didn't want to walk in and fire a bunch of people, so I made an effort to work with a team that was in place. The difficult thing for everyone that preceded me on the project is that they were going from one writer's tone to another's. Apple has acknowledged these problems later on with, We don't know anything about making television. <laughs> and this was... <laughs> <laughs> and this was from the senior vice president so software of <laughs> not <laughs> and this was coming from the senior vice president software and service Eddie Q the architect of the company's TV plus strategy <laughs> we know <laughs> again it goes like <laughs> we know how to create apps we know how to do distribution we don't <laughs> I can't we know how to market, but we, but we don't really know how to create shows. <laughs> oh my god. Lack of fleshed out characters and their unclear motivations lead to unnecessary freakouts. Fuck do you want from me? Fucking listen to me! Oh, don't walk away from me, you're calling me a right? I'm not- Screams. <laughs> And usage of fox to compensate with the writing. Fucking Anna, fucking pizza. Did not fuck Mitch. I heard, but Mitch fucked that up by fucking everything. And a little side note here: Witherspoon's character Bradley's nickname is Bradley Two Fox Jackson, since accidentally said fuck. Okay, and then I got mad at myself and said fuck again on live TV. That's that's just deep. Don't get me wrong, Aniston, Witherspoon, and Corral definitely trying their best. Maybe trying too hard as well. And I really like the main plot twist. I don't know if you can call it a twist, but uh, especially one that reveals the true nature of Mitch and how Alex actually kept looking the other way. Starting from the first episode, we knew several women were sexually arrested by Mitch, but we weren't given the knowledge about how bad he was. In episode 3, Mitch sits down with director Dick Landry, who's part of a scandal as well. He learns that the allegations against Dick were true, and there's even more. Towards the end of the conversation, Mitch calls him on the spot that he's a predator. And that leads us to think, maybe the things that Mitch did were not that bad. Maybe not Weinstein bad, but maybe Louis C.K. bad? New York Times said uh, that Louis C.K. jizzed on his own stomach. <laughs> now I've busted a lot of nuts in my day. None of them were newsworthy. <laughs> but behold. Episode 8 shows us the true color of Mitch. In a flashback to a time when they're in Las Vegas to report the shooting, we see his relationship with Hannah. At first glance, it seems like he's really cared about her as a mentor. After a walk with Hannah, Mitch invites her into his hotel room and forces his then shocked assistant Hannah to sleep with him. It reveals that he's not a mentor but a predator. That all he aimed to do after a depressing massacre is to have sex with his assistant. Acting was spot on during this scene and all of this uncomfortableness makes you feel for Hannah and these traumas are real. As an audience it really made me empathize with Hannah on a level that I thought it never would. I just wish that the show is more this kind of a visual storytelling and acting as a tool rather than unnecessarily long, never ending, pointless dialogues, free cats and over the top acting. In earlier episodes Bradley has been shown as the fed up field reporter overwhelmed by the Philistine behavior that she sees every other day. She sees the current mainstream media as an artificial and insincere way of circulating the manipulated information that fits the narrative as the way that pleases the network. To her, journalism should be an honest and informative job for the masses. Look at him about the truth. You remember the truth? Journalism? We're news people, Jones. Listen to yourself. Okay, at least that's the basic idea behind her character. And here's some thought. If she wants to fix things and the network television as corrupt as it is, why would she still wants to fix television? I'm having a difficult time here to understand her motivations because I think the people who have Apple TVs not usually a big fan of the news. It's not the 90s or early 2000s that people think, oh, that was on the news, therefore must be true. No, it's the right opposite. That's why today we have conspiracy preaching millionaires. They buy the Apple TV so they can play Crossy Road and watch Netflix. Characters are not even believable. If Bradley is so fed up with the corrupt journalism, we have something for that too. It's called the social media. You know where she got famous from in the show? Believability aside, 
Mitch network executives and the people who covered it up are the villains here. And here's the thing, the things they've done during the show are less compelling from their real life counterparts. I'm not a big fan of excessive dramatization of characters, but here we have okay villains and bland characters. Anyway, from that let's talk about the duration of the show. Morning Show's approach to visual storytelling can be explained as tell, don't show and make it longer. Show uses this vast quantity of time to explain the character motivations by shoving them texting or talking on their phone to meet up and explicitly say the reason of their meeting. And when their meeting occurs, they do repeat the reason of their meeting and then go on with the explaining that already explained. I know why you two met, just get on with it and the bad dialogue to fill narratively nothing happening scenes did not help at all. This was the main reason that made me skip some of the talking which I haven't done in a long time in any TV show regardless of the quality. With all these problems aside, the main issue here is that the Apple's approach on the new television, new cinema or whatever you want to call it, they wanted to surf on a relatively new wave of television shows. But with the old thinking that more money and more star power you pour into it, better it gets. Um, no. With just adding those, it doesn't yield to a masterpiece. It yields the pieces of a dull TV show that has premium look and nothing special. I think it suffice to say that they tried. But even with those problems, I'm still looking forward to what Apple might bring to the table. With new and original shows conceived by the writers, showrunners or creators.